hello welcome to my channel um i don't know why this part's so awkward hi hi you like jazz um <laughs> well hello there welcome back to another awkward video about animal care think of an icebreaker um why did the cat cross the road Oh wait, no, that's not the joke. God, okay. Last week's video is gonna be up here somewhere. It's gonna be where I set up my Crested Geckos Vivarium, which is super cool, super fun. I'm not that great at editing, but you can kind of get the gist of it. Um, anyways, yeah, on to today's video. I'm gonna be talking about chinchilla care, basically everything that you're gonna need for a startup. There's a lot of great videos out there, so if you happen to click on this one, thank you. Hopefully I can help you out. I'm gonna be covering a lot, <laughs> and what I am covering is just the basics. So if you're watching this video and you're thinking, hmm, maybe I don't need the perching, maybe I don't need that many chew toys, then a chinchilla probably isn't the right animal for you. Just because, again, everything I'm talking about is the minimum, and if you really want a chinchilla but you don't have the money for all of this, that's perfectly fine. Just wait a couple more months, save up some more, and you'll be good to go. But yeah, just because this video will be so long, I'm going to try my best to link in the description the different parts of the video where I talk about what. Part one of the video is going to be cages. This is where I go over the cage size, bedding, what kind of cage you should get, and pretty much everything inside of the cage. That's going to be the bulk of the video. I'm going to talk about the food bowls, the chews, the hides, all of that in part one. Part two is going to be about their diet. So that's going to be where I talk about their treats, their pelleted food, what to buy, what not to buy, their hay, everything like that. And part three is going to be just kind of everything else lumped together. So like socialization with your chinchilla, bonding with your chinchilla, and just all the other stuff here and there that doesn't fall into the first two categories. But yeah, without stalling too much, let's get going. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna be talking about is cages. So let's get started in the minimum size for a chinchilla is gonna be three by two by four, and that's feet. So what that means is that the cage needs to be three feet long by two feet wide by a minimum of four feet. Now it's important to note that chinchillas are social animals, so I do recommend getting more than one. And if you get more than one, you need to add about three square feet extra per chinchilla. Now doing in pairs is fine. I'm gonna talk more about getting multiple chinchillas. One of my favorite cages, as well as for singular chinchillas or bonded chinchillas, is right behind me. It's gonna be the Critter Nation. Now I have the Ferret Nation. The only difference is actually gonna be the bar spacing. And if you have the option to buy a Critter Nation, I would get that because the bars are uh, closer together. There's less risk of a chinchilla sticking an arm out there or you know, just anything getting caught in between the bars because they are smaller, but at the time those were sold out pretty much across the country. So I got my Ferret Nation, which has worked out pretty well for me. Now with the size of the cage comes the material of the cage. Chinchillas are rodents and they will chew on absolutely everything and anything that you put inside their cage, including the cage itself. So I recommend not putting them in any sort of plastic cages. This is why I don't recommend hardly any of the cages that you'd find at big chain stores like Pets Pet Petco or any of the KT cages because they are all made of plastic and the chinchillas will chew on your cage. Even if it's not plastic, they will chew on it. I guarantee you. So you want to stay away from any plastic cages. And lastly about the cages is that chinchillas do like to climb. Their natural habitat is in the mountains and they like to hop from ledges to ledges more than you'd see them running. Now they do like to run and exercise, so we'll talk about wheels later on in the video as well, but as far as their cages go, that's why I say it needs to be a minimum of four feet tall, is just because they are going to be hopping from place to place to place. <laughs> so now let's move on to what's gonna be going inside the cage. Like I just mentioned, they do like to hop and climb from place to place to place. So the number one thing I'm gonna mention, first of all, not that they're in an importance list because it's all important and necessary. Um, but yeah, number one is just gonna be their perching. Now these guys, again, will chew on absolutely everything. So you can't put any sort of plastic perching inside of their cage. However, you can add um, lava rocks, which is my favorite type of perching, as well as wood perching. The wood has to be kiln dried pine. A good place to find these is going to be on Etsy. There's a lot of good shops out there that sell handmade, custom-designed perching. 
Next we're going to be talking about hides. Now chinchillas are prey animals. I'm going to mention that quite a bit in the video because it's very important to how you take care of them. Basically that means that even though these guys are domesticated, they still have a fear instinct inside of them and any animal, whether prey or predator, is going to be uncomfortable when you take it home for its first day. You're taking that animal out of its environment and putting it in a brand new environment where it feels super insecure. So it's super important that your chinchilla does have tons and plenty of hides that it can go and feel safe. I recommend a minimum of two because if you only have one and the chinchilla only feels safe in its hide and it's not vulnerable to the elements, what's gonna be happening is that it's not gonna be going around its cage and exploring because it's only gonna be confided to one spot. So if you have multiple hides, the chinchilla feels more comfortable getting set to its new environment. If you do buy two chinchillas, which again is what I recommend, you need to have one hide per chinchilla as well as a third hide. So again, they do have that option, but if they have their own space, a chinchilla is not having to invade another chinchilla's space. I think if you're wanting to give um, the best life to your chinchilla, this is the way to go. And I'm gonna mention this again because I'm gonna drill it into your heads. Chinchillas cannot have plastic in their cage. They chew on absolutely everything. So make sure your hide is made out of a safe wood for them. Next, we're gonna be talking about wheels. I mentioned this a little bit at the very beginning of the episode. Episode? This ain't Disney, okay. So now we're gonna be talking about wheels. I mentioned wheels a little bit at the beginning of this video, but now I'm gonna go into more depth for them. A lot of people say that chinchillas won't need wheels. A lot of people say that they do, but they're not safe. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys just my conclusive opinion. Oftentimes there's not very appropriate wheels out there for chinchillas. Like all rodents, uh, chinchillas need to have their back completely straight when they are running. Otherwise it can cause severe pain and back issues for them. And there's not many wheels on the market that I've personally seen that follow that. One of my favorite websites to get any chinchilla products from is Exotic Nutrition. They have a chin sprint, which I have in my cage. I believe it's about a foot and a half in diameter. Um, and Gizmo is able to run completely and keep his back straight all the time. Um, there's also quite a few wheels um, on Etsy and other marketplaces like that that have the exact same design where it's basically like <laughs> this big. And it attaches to the cage and that's perfectly fine. All right, now it's time to talk about their food and water, although that's in the next segment where I talk about diets, so we're just gonna be talking about their food and water dishes. In my experience, chinchillas love, 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 love to knock over their food dishes all the time. So one thing you can do to prevent this is to get a bottom heavy bowl. These are usually sold in normal pet stores. Basically their bottoms are just heavier so it's harder for chinchillas to lift up. However, my personal favorite is just using a uh, basically bird bowl for the bird cages. They're called Koo Cups but there's a lot of different designs out there. Basically the ring itself that the bowl fits into locks onto your cage and then the bowl just pops in and out of the ring and you can lock it in place. You can take the bowl out, wash it completely, get fresh food and then pop it back in and the chinchillas won't flip it over. So as far as water goes, chinchillas do need to have a water bottle. They can't really have water bowls. One, it's not too natural for them to drink out of. So if you provide them a water bowl, they will drink from it because it's their only source of water. <laughs> um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's healthy for them. You do need to get them a water bottle. They cannot get wet. We're gonna talk a little bit more about why they can't get wet in their fur. Again, later on in the video when I talk about bathing them, but essentially they can't. So if you have a water dish, oftentimes when they go to drink out of it, their neck will get wet and that can cause so many health problems. You just don't even wanna deal with it. So go ahead and get the water bottle. I will say my personal recommendation is going to be Oxbow. I've used K2 water bottles for about a year, year and a half, ever since I got my first chinchilla. Um, and I was having to replace them almost every month to two months, which just happens with chinchillas because again, they chew on absolutely everything and they will chew on the water spigot and it will start dripping and then you have to refill the water bottle like every 10 minutes and then it creates a puddle of water which they can get into and it's not good at all. I just figure that's the way that it goes because they chew on everything. But <laughs> then Oxbow came out with this line. I just bought it because I was like, well, you know, I'll, if I don't like it, I'll be buying a new one in a month anyways. 
and I've had it for six months now and it's yet to start leaking on me so I definitely recommend Oxbow. Next we're going to be talking about their hay feeders and yes they do need them. Make sure you get a hay feeder, make sure the hay feeder is elevated. Again, Oxbow, Oxbow, Oxbow. I absolutely love they came out with this brand new line which I will get the name of for you. They have a hay feeder made out of applewood sticks. I guarantee you guys you'll love it. My chinchilla loves it even if he chews on the applewood. It's completely safe to him. It hangs on the cage. There is a lot of other different types. Again, just make sure that you don't get plastic. Another one extremely important thing to keep in your chinchilla cage. Now, keep in mind all of this, again, is necessary, but these are so important and I stress them because oftentimes it's the thing missing from chinchilla care. Chinchillas are rodents. So their teeth do grow and don't stop growing. So you do need to provide them with a ton of toys and chews. You need a minimum of five chews or toys in their cage at all times. And that's a minimum. You should have more, especially if you're an experienced chinchilla owner. Most people will buy one or two. That's definitely not enough. There's different kinds of chews on the market. So let me go ahead and tell you guys that there's lava rocks on the market. I recommend at least two in the cage although one will be fitting as long as you have lava purchase for them. There's also harder wood, like apple wood or kiln dried pine wood toys. I recommend at least two to three of those things just because they're really what help shave down the chinese tea and do it safely. And lastly, you can have a lot of different types of wicker balls or all natural loofahs. Not the shower loofahs, <laughs> but uh, yeah, all natural loofahs. Again, there's a ton of great websites that make super cool chitty toys and some that you just buy like wicker bowls in bulk that I'll link down below as well. So you can kind of get a good idea on that. But definitely chews are so, so, so important to a chinchilla and you definitely need to have this in their cage. So now we've arrived to bedding. Now, you might have been wondering this since the start of the video where I recommended Ferret Nations to you. Ferret Nation pans are plastic, which I have been preaching to you this entire video, no plastic. So uh, what I do and what most chinchillas do is we actually use fleece bedding. Again, on Etsy, a lot of people will sell them. It's actually super easy to make if you have a sewing machine. I've never sewed before in my life and I learned real, real quickly how to make them. If you do want to use a loose substrate for bedding, you do have to be careful because chinchillas will chew on everything. And for sure, you want to stay away from any sort of bleached bedding. So like I know the KT bedding has an all white bedding, um, no scented bedding, no lavender smells. I know <laughs> one of the best things is just going to be plain paper substrate. I feel uncomfortable even telling you that though, because paper can impact a chinchilla. So I don't recommend any loose substrate. However, if that's your only option at the moment, I would just recommend do your own research on that specific type of bedding and make sure that if ingested at all, that it's not going to be harmful to the animal. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I recommend fleece. There's, there's not really too much around that. So we're coming in the home stretch of the, uh, first portion of this video, which is cages. I told you guys this was going to be the longest part of the video, but we're almost done. We got like three things left to cover. One of those three things is going to be dust and bathing your chinchilla. Now, the reason why I put this at one of the variants um, is because you don't want to keep this in your cage at all times. But before I go into that, let me talk a little bit more about how to bathe your chinchilla. As you probably know, chinchillas are super duper incredibly soft and fluffy. And there's numbers out there saying that they have up to 50 hairs per follicle, up to 100 hairs per follicle. I personally don't know which one's correct because I hear so many different numbers from so many different places off YouTube, off Google, off Bets, everywhere. Um, but just know it's a lot. So they actually can't get wet. What ends up happening if they do get wet is they can't dry themselves off and their fur can get real matted and mildewy and it's just a huge mess. If you do get your chinchilla wet, I do recommend taking them to the vet. One of the best things to do then and there in that moment is to put some dust in the area. Just like you have dry shampoo in your hair, it works the same for chinchillas. They bathe in dust and not water. The dust will go in and it'll absorb all of the oils that's produced and it keeps them nice, soft, and fluffy. However, just like if you were to put baby powder on your hands every day, 
for a week and continue to do it throughout the week. Your hands are going to get very dry. And same thing with chinchillas. If you have their dust in their cage 24-7, their skin will start to get dry and it's not good for them. So I only recommend bathing your chinchilla once to twice a week depending on your chinchilla. Second to last thing <laughs> in the cage requirements is a litter box. Now this is at the back again with the dust bath because one, this is going to be optional and two, Again, I personally don't recommend it just because I've never had success with it at my personal house and personal experience, um, but we'll jump into that. So chinchillas can be potty trained much like rabbits, which is to say that if you have a litter box in their corner, they can be trained to go pee in that box. However, chinchillas will poop everywhere all the time. They poop while they're running, they poop while they're hopping, they just poop, 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 poop. And it's super tiny, tinier than that, and it doesn't smell, so it's not like if your dog poops all over your house, it's a lot like rabbit poop. So the litter box is specifically for pee. We're at the last thing under cages, and that's gonna be some sort of cooling off device inside of the cage itself. Now, oftentimes that's just a slab of granite. KT sells one called Chin Chiller, which is the one that I personally use. I have like three of them just all stacked together. I also have one that I put inside of a fleece sleeve that's under a hide so they can go and have almost like a cool hide. And even though it is fleece, it still makes the fleece cold. So that works out pretty well. Chinchillas need to stay around 65 to 75 degrees. So if your house is going to get, or the room that they're gonna be in is gonna get over 70 to 75 degrees, you have to get multiple chinchillas or multiple slabs of granite to allow them that area to cool off and they overheat extremely easily. That being said, if you cannot provide them a room or space, to stay below 75 degrees, you should not get a chinchilla. Or you should wait on getting one. You know, you can still get one. Just wait till you're, you can provide a proper environment for them. Okay, so we are now on to diet. I don't know about you guys, but on my raw, unedited footage, I am on 30 minutes of talking here. So hopefully I can make that a little bit smaller for you guys and take away all of my ums and buts that are in me recording this. So, um... <laughs> We're gonna move on to diet. I did tell you that caging was gonna be the bulk of the video, but yeah, we got past that. We're rolling along, we're on diet now. <laughs> so we're gonna start with hay because it's the most important part of their diet. About 85% of their diet should be hay. I recommend Timothy hay as their daily hay. However, you can offer different types of hay, like for example, botanical hay. Um, is very sweet, so it would be a nice treat. There's other types of hay, like oat hay. Um, oat hay is real crunchy, but not as sweet, so I've bought it. My chinchillas personally don't like it because it's not very sweet and it's crunchy. However, some might like it because it, it's crunchy. It has that feel of crunch to it. So that would be up to you and how to explore what your chinchillas do like, but Timothy should be the daily hay that they receive. So the rest of your chinchilla's diet should be supplemented by food pellets. Now you do need to have a high quality food pellet. And what I mean by that is that the first ingredient should always be Timothy hay, and it should never contain any things like dry fruit or seed. There is a brand that has a Fiesta line that has like dry corn and sunflower seeds in their chinchilla food. It just stay away. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. And I will go into more details for you so you can understand why. The reason why you wanna stay away from seed is that it's just way too fatty for chinchillas. Oftentimes, chinchillas fed seed as treats or fed seeds in their daily diet, which is you know included in their food mix, will develop a fatty liver. Now, fatty liver disease is actually known as one of the silent killers of chinchillas because chinchilla owners won't know that anything's wrong until the chinchilla passes away or until it's just very sick and they take it to the vet and they see it for themselves. Now we're gonna be going on to fruits and veggies. Now chinchilla's bodies can't process sugar too, too well, especially not an excess amount of sugar. I know this diet's pretty boring of just plain Timothy hay pellets and just plain Timothy hay, but in their natural habitat, they just naturally feed off of dry grasses and hay. So, offering them something that their body can't process, like a strawberry or a carrot. Even though vegetables don't seem sweet to us, they're extremely sweet to the chinchillas, 
and they cannot process that sugar. You do want to stay away from fruits and veggies as well as seeds, whether that be dried or preserved or fresh, whatever it is, just Timothy Hay pellets. Of course, there's gonna be some additives and preservatives in the pellets to keep them fresh. My favorite pelleted food is by Exotic Nutrition. They offer a chinchilla diet as well as a Timothy Hay pelleted bag. Both of those are good options. If you can't afford exotic nutrition or you can't get to it uh, where you live, Oxbow Garden Select is probably the next best. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh my goodness, this chinchilla has such a bland diet. How am I supposed to train it? How am I supposed to reward it? How is it supposed to like me? What kind of treats can I offer a chinchilla that can't eat anything? I got the answer for you. So some of the best treats for chinchillas are actually gonna be flowers. You can find this in um, hibiscus flower, rose petals. The exotic nutrition food I feed actually comes with rose hip inside of it. There's a ton of different options out there. Exotic nutrition, again, sells the little flower packets as well as Etsy. There's a lot of great um, sellers on there that have chinchilla safe food as well as treats. Another most popular one is oats. They're used a lot for training. My chinchillas personally don't eat oats. I offered them multiple times and they just said no. They like the flowers. So whatever works best for you and your chinchilla, but you want to keep to those types of treats. Then again, stay away from any sort of fruit or anything like that. So we're coming to the home stretch of this video. Now we're on to the just monster bundle of socialization, bonding, and other things needed for chinchillas. We're gonna start off with socialization. So chinchillas naturally live in herds and are very social animals. So if you can afford two chinchillas, buy two chinchillas. If you can only afford one chinchilla, then wait till you can afford to buy two chinchillas. I don't recommend buying just one. Now there are certain circumstances. For example, Gizmo is by himself. I can do a video on Gizmo and his journey with me separately. I've tried to pair him with three different chinchillas. I've even tried to pair him with other bonded chinchillas and other herds of chinchillas. So that's why he's kept separately. There are situations like that. So if you are a full-time chinchilla owner and you have a single chinchilla, I'm not trying to call you out because I understand that there's circumstances, but if you are a beginner, I do recommend starting out with two. I do recommend getting two females together. However, if you do get a male and a female, you should neuter the male because you probably will have babies. And again, if you're watching this video, you're most likely a beginner and I don't recommend beginners trying to breed chinchillas. So now we're gonna talk about bonding with your chinchilla. It's important to note that every single chinchilla is different. So what I say might not apply to you and your specific chinchilla, but I'll try and cover absolutely everything. When you take your chinchilla home for the very first time, you, you wanna put your chinchilla in a cage that's already set up if you uh, take them home in their little take home box and you just have them sit in a dark box for hours while you set their cage up for them, that's just so stressful. Do not do it. Already have your cage set up with everything already in there. Put your chinchilla in their new home and you want to leave them alone for about three days to a week. You don't want to take them out or try and interact with them too much. So the most important thing when starting out bonding to your chinchilla is making sure that they no longer fear you. If you guys want, I can do a whole other interaction on chinchilla uh, body language like I mentioned in the beginning of this video as well as chinchilla training and uh, just more bonding because there's a lot more information out there that I'm sure I'm missing, but that's just gonna be the starter beginner information. So lastly, with other information, we're gonna be talking about chinchilla commitment. So chinchillas can live upwards of 10 years. There's documents of them living up to 17. So just know that if you are 12, 13, and you want a chinchilla, this might be an animal that you'll have to consider, okay, when I go to college, are my parents gonna be able to adequately care for it? Am I gonna be able to take it to college? Am I not gonna be going to college? They are a huge commitment. You don't just get a chinchilla for five years and then decide it's not convenient for you anymore so you rehome it. That's why we have such a big housing crisis for chinchillas right now. So you need to understand the commitment of a chinchilla. Lastly, they are expensive. This whole list I gave you, is not optional except for the optional things I mentioned. <laughs> as well as chinchillas usually start out at about $200. You can find them for cheaper, you can find them for more expensive. And that's just starting. There are monthly costs and yearly costs involved in owning a chinchilla, as well as the cost of an exotic vet. Chinchillas are 
exotic. So their daily checkup, I know at my local veterinarian for an exotic chinchilla is $70 minimum for a checkup. You do wanna make sure that you're getting the chinchilla from a good breeder or a good pet shop. You don't wanna be sending your money to bad facilities that can then put that to make more chinchillas and breed more chinchillas um, in that bad condition. However, if you care about my opinion, I'm gonna tell it to you. If you're looking at getting a chinchilla, look at rescuing. There's plenty of people buying baby chinchillas, plenty. We need more people buying and helping out rescue chinchillas. So that's the video on chinchilla care. If you guys learn anything about chinchillas, go ahead and give this video a like. That way other people can see it and learn about chinchillas. If you want to join me on my journey to learn and share good animal care, go ahead and subscribe as well. I think it's down there. <laughs> um, that way you can see my videos when I put it out. And again, we can just grow as a community. And if you have any questions about chinchillas, any video ideas, or if I said something that you might have disagree with, go ahead and leave a comment below. I just ask that we all remain respectful of each other. But yeah, that's the video, guys. I hope you liked it. Everyone have a good day. Thank you. <laughs> you thought this video was over. <laughs> so did I. I forgot that on TikTok, I promised all of my followers that I would show my green tree python cage reveal. So if you're only interested in chinchillas, just watch that. Uh, video's over. If you didn't want to see that cage, go ahead and come with me to check it out. Also, if you're not following me on TikTok, my link will be below. So here is my green tree python cage. I have some flowers right over here. I know they'll probably die. That one's already dying, but I thought they looked nice. I also have some creeping Charlie. I'm hoping that that's going to go ahead and carpet his whole floor. And I have a fern and a peace lily to help with the, or that will uh, like the humidity. As well as one, two, three, four, five different perches for him. Right now he's on my little moss sticks. I think that's just because it's thinner. I think as he gets older, he's gonna really like to use a lot of the thicker perches. Um, but yeah, it's all custom. I have my false layer, my substrate the background <laughs> and everything is all custom as well. I actually need to fix that little area. It's sealed, so it's not uh, water getting in, but it's still bare, so I was gonna put on some moss to cover it up. And then because this cage is next to gizmos, I just have a green background right here so that he doesn't get stressed out seeing gizmo and gizmo doesn't get stressed out seeing him, but yeah. There it is.